My name's David Landini and I'm here today with Tim Quilty. Tim is a member of the Victorian Legislative Council for Northern Victoria and we're at the uh, Mathara Red Gum Sawmill and we just had a very interesting discussion with Chris Crump, the owner of this mill, and particularly about the uh, Millawa Forest that was changed to a national park back in 2010 which put out put uh, quite a number of uh, workers out of work and uh, shut down uh, an industry that was worth $86 million per year to the local economy. So good morning Tim and out of that discussion Tim what do you what was your opinion of that? Oh it was, it's just a story we hear repeated over and over again you've got environmentalists in the city yep. um, saying let's lock up some some trees in the bush um, to save the environment but they don't even know what they're doing um, they're saying this is an ancient forest it's not an ancient forest it's, it's been around for a bit over 100 years yep. um, it, it grew we, we heard how, how it grew from nothing after the floods in um, 1870 1870 um, what was far, what was uh, bare land sand hills and, and scrub yeah, re reed beds yep. reed beds turned into a forest and they and they used it and they started harvesting it for timber mill and they built yep. a massive industry here that sustains the community and then we've got idiots in um, and they're actively managing it uh, looking after it and now we've got idiots in Sydney saying let's lock it all up um, destroy the local economy yep lose everyone's jobs yep um, and they'll end up with a out of control wasteland because eucalypts they're a, they're a scrub weed they grow anywhere and they'll, they grow wild yep and they burn and without active management what we're going to do is in a in a few years time we're going to have a massive fire through here which is going to ruin all the timber that's there and chris pointed that out that his opinion is it's inevitable that there will be a massive bushfire eventually go through that forest because there's a huge fuel load on the ground and that will burn and destroy possibly the entire forest anyway yeah. And any koalas that happen to be here will die, just like we've seen them die yep. in, in the national parks all over the place in, in the fires earlier this year. Yep. Um, it's, it's just it's grotesque mismanagement, and it's what the people in the city just keep doing to us out here. And it's shut down an, an industry worth $86 million per year and put so many timber workers out of a job, and, uh, and basically uh, no, no benefit to anybody, and, and inevitably will be a disaster. And this, I mean, this, this mill here, it's the biggest employer in this town other than the council. Oh, yep. um, once you turn that off, this whole town blows away. It's a yep. story we just see repeated over and over again. Yep. Um, they make rules in the city and kill our little rural community. The rules made in Sydney, uh, the city, Sydney and Melbourne, that are certainly not relevant to here and destroy the livelihoods of the people in these areas. And Tim, we've also had the border closures uh, in Victoria, of course, and, uh, and that's had a very negative effect on uh, the movement between southern New South Wales and Victoria. And this is the first time I've been across the, the river in, in three months or something. I yep. think last time was the last time I would talk to you. Yep. Um, and then we got, all got locked down in um, Wodonga. We haven't had a coronavirus case yet. There has not been one. Uh, in all of regional Victoria now there is there's 0.2 cases per 14 days. It's dwindling to nothing but the uh, government in Melbourne is going to keep us all locked down. Yep. Um, I think what we've really realised out of this is just how much more we depend on the towns across the river. Yep. Um, our community is not Melbourne, it's not Sydney. If we, yep. those of us who live along the river, our, our community is across the river. Um, this has done hundreds of millions of dollars damage to our local economies, yep. disrupted our lives, yep. uh, made, just made a huge mess for absolutely no good purpose whatsoever. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is the first time I've been out in public without a mask on. I'm feeling guilty now. I'm going, I should be covering up. Um, no, no, no. no. But th there is no virus in regional Victoria. That's um, right. Yep. And um, I think for many people, this, this might be a, a sudden wake up call of just how much, how interdependent we are with each other across the river and how disconnected we are from the city. And it's obviously a call out as well about how they'll make, make decisions in, Sid in Melbourne or in Sydney to appeal to voters in Melbourne and Sydney and they don't care how much they screw us down here. That's, uh, that's I think that's so true, Tim. And the other thing, Tim, uh, you've mentioned uh, at least twice in the Victorian Parliament now about the creation of new states uh, out of uh, particularly Victoria and New South Wales. And if you'd like to say something about the possibility of new states, Tim. Sure. So um, this is not going to get better while all the power is in, in Melbourne, all the power is in, in Sydney. We, ha we have to make a change and the, the change is going to be we break away and make a new state or new states. Um, the, we, we can argue about how, how to do it, but effectively we know that um, Northern Victoria and Southern New South Wales uh, belong together. Um, we will have, instead of people, in, environmentalists who've never, never seen this area and, and have no interest in what we actually do down here, we'll be running ourselves, 
um, we'll create a new parliament somewhere small. We'll, we will um, stop the resources draining out. We'll stop the um, local economies being killed, and we'll actually create a new state. Um, I think the border shutdown is probably going to create a momentum now to make this happen. I'm really hoping that in the, the next few months we'll actually start having some meetings along the river um, well, of, of people to push the new state movement forward because I reckon the time has come now. If it's now or never, um, and this is, it's now, we're going to make it happen. Right. Well, that's great, Tim, and, and I can only say I agree entirely with, uh, with Tim, and Tim is a great advocate for uh, additional states, a new state or states. Uh, in Australia, and certainly, Tim, you would it, it could only be beneficial for the people in those new states. Oh, that's right. Look, it's the only way we're going to save ourselves. Um, yep. If we don't stand up now and do this, um, we will cease to be. Uh, our, our communities will be gone. This will be. This will go back to scrubland burning. Yep. With no nothing. With no people in it. But thanks very much, Tim. Thank thanks you. for your time, and we'll have a good day today.